first time in the Ram CDV. I'm pumped. Just finished our first stop. We're at about 60 stops today, but they're all apartments here in the U District. And we're at about 240 something packages. So you do the math. But I just finished my first stop. 10 packages to a locker. They're all in this tote right here. It makes it so easy. Uh, we're gonna get some of this done. And then we're gonna look at the Ram CDV. What's great? What's maybe not so great? What's different? What's unexpected? But we're gonna take a very thorough look. And right now I'll point out already two amazing things that I like so far about the new Ram CDV. Push start. So everything I need is right here. I've got unlock and lock for the van and then bulkhead and sliding rear door. And you wouldn't believe it, but finally someone at Amazon listened to my request and there's a built in snack bar. Oh, let's go. One thing that threw me off right away was the speedometer was in kilometers per hour, not miles per hour. So I just barely started driving and it was already at like 40. But no, it was just 40 kilometers per hour, not miles per hour, but that's an easy fix. Go to this little vehicle icon, units, and whoop. Okay, it didn't actually change. Hopefully it'll change when I start driving. I'll let you know. I love apartment art, by the way. I've seen some real gems. The dreaded one-time password. The customer has to read me like a six-digit password that they received in their email. Otherwise I can't deliver it to them. And this is an apartment and this person's not answering, so they might not be getting their stuff today. I just noticed something. I like it. I think a lot of people might find it annoying. Okay, so I'm gonna put it in park and the parking brake automatically comes on. Now I know some people are gonna find that annoying because they don't like to put the parking brake on every single time. And you do have to turn it off. You have to manually turn it off. It doesn't turn off as far as I know when you put it into drive. But I think it makes sense. There are gonna be less people forgetting to put the parking brake on when they probably should. I don't know, what do you think? Nice. It's not quite automatic like the EDV, but it is nice. All right, here's one thing that I found slightly annoying. When you turn the van on with the phone connected to the charger, we'll see if it, yeah, see, it keeps doing that. It might be something with the phone, but I think it might also be because this screen has Android Auto. So every time I plug the phone in when the truck is on, that screen comes up and I just have to exit out, but it is kind of annoying. And I probably should have mentioned this way sooner. This thing has a radio, it's back again. So the Ford CDVs, which are just the version of this based on the Ford chassis, there's this whole back and forth between drivers blasting the music, but then they took away the radio and people were listening to headphones, which can be dangerous. So the radio is back. It doesn't even look like it's limited or anything. It goes to 38. So if you're looking for 40, you're out of luck. But 38, it seems pretty good. The EDV only goes to like 20. Obviously all these numbers could mean anything, but it seems like this is a pretty standard radio, I think. Time to test the maneuverability on this thing. I pull into a dead end by accident, but it's okay. There's a path right over there. A narrow path, but it should be enough. Maybe shouldn't make a habit of that. That does happen though, where the map is maybe misleading. You think it's a through road, but really it's a dead end. There's a sign that says turn around, but really the turnaround is blocked. That's one thing that I've always liked about the Rams is that they're very maneuverable. And this thing is no different. It's fixed by the way, miles per hour. Okay, it's one thing to find totes in the wild. It's a whole other thing to find a stash. Who did this? Don't worry, buddies. I got you. Oh. Post office too. It's only a matter of time before this building looks more like that building. We're about halfway done. It started to rain, so I got the hat. Very nice. My girlfriend will love this tote. Puget, not Pudget.
I am so genuinely curious about what it's like to ride around in one of those things. They're so small and they seem like they're like barely holding on. Is that just me? I'd be curious one day to drive one. Here's one I've never been to before. The speedometer thing is a glitch. It's back. Check out the little spot for the belly. It's like a custom metal part and it just slides right out. Nice. Oh my goodness. When I first moved to Seattle, there were none of these big 20 story buildings here in the U District. And now there's like five or six. It's crazy. Let's talk shelves. Clearly this has a lot more room than the normal Ram Promasters. You can put stuff on the floor, middle and top shelf. Top and middle shelves in the back both fold up. And even with totes on both sides, there's still a decent aisle to walk through. We've got the usual garage door type door back here. You pull the handle and it slides up. Unlock, spotlight. Got a nice little vent back here. Nice. Most of the stuff is like exactly the same as the Ford CDVs. One thing that I like so much better is the seating position. You're so much higher up. So you can just slide right out and you're already standing. In the Fords, you had to pull a handle pull yourself up and out of the seat into the main aisle, but that is not the case in the Ram version. You just slide right out. But other stuff like the sliding door, pretty much the same thing. Okay, this is important. Pro tip alert. Pay attention to this. These vans have a big issue with the bulkhead door coming off the track and the passenger door not latching or unlatching properly. If you or your DSP have any issues, Call Utilmaster, seriously. All the info is on this sticker right here. I think it's usually above the driver's side. We were having that issue where the slider door wouldn't latch. This thing was brand new. Somebody got in contact with Utilmaster and they came right away to fix it. And now it works, as far as I can tell. Hey, this is Amazon delivery. I have a package for 302. Perfect, thank you. You ever had these voodoo chips? I don't even know what they are. They're like tangy, spicy, voodoo-y. Two spots each for USB and USB-C, plus your normal 12 volt. Fire extinguisher, emergency supplies, jump seat, garbage, first aid. Shout out to MSC. Here's a little thing that I I'm not quite sure what it's for. It's too big for a phone, I think. Does this one have heated seats? This one doesn't have heated seats. We're getting too spoiled now. But it has lane assist, that has cruise control. It just feels a lot nicer, which when you're spending 10 hours a day in a van, it's good. Backup camera and 360 camera. All the usual buttons up here. Dome lamp, spotlight, lock and unlock the bulkhead door. And plenty of headroom. I'm getting a blue screen of death on the backup cam. Good thing there's still this one. The beeping works great though, as you can tell. I'm delivering to a locker in 7-Eleven. I just found one of our dollies. Dunzo! Just picked up our rescue. 18 more stops. Let's do it. Oh, spotted a piece by they drift. I worked with him at NSC before he left us and moved to Portland. But look at that, pretty sweet. Freak me out, dude. I don't want to get stuck. Another improvement on this version of the CDV is how smooth the sides are. It's like all the rivets are gone.
This is funny. I don't know who's using an armrest, but... Oh, it's not even really flat. Mm. It's dark now. There's one more thing I'm gonna show you, which is the lighting, especially the rear hazard lights. Let's take a look. Headlights, flashers, those lights up there, I forget what they're called. A mirror mounted hazard light, side mounted hazard light. And then here in the back is where it gets crazy. It's like a party, whoa. It's kind of interesting how it's alternating. And I mean, it definitely seems like it's more likely to catch somebody's attention, especially at night. All right, we're headed in. It's a wrap. I'll give a couple more final thoughts, but overall, pretty impressed with the Ram CDV. I'm back in my apartment. Here are a few more things that I didn't mention on my route but I do want to mention right now. I saw an R2 prototype like five months ago at Fred Meyers down the street from my apartment. So if you want to see more of the styling and there's a few other things that I talked about in that video that I didn't mention in this video, I'll leave a link to that above. Something else that I learned since I filmed the video, that blue screen of death when I was backing up, apparently there's a new regulation or something where you're only supposed to have one backup monitor going at once. So pretty much every other Amazon vehicle that I can think of has the rear view camera up kind of where the rear view mirror would usually be, but also in the screen on the infotainment system. So that's two different places. I guess the new regulation is you're only supposed to have it in one. And so with the RAM version of the CDV, it only displays in the monitor up where the rear view camera would usually be. I don't know if that's because it's distracting or if having two different angles is weird. And a third, very interesting, very exciting thing. Stellantis, which is the umbrella that covers Jeep, Chrysler, Ram, Dodge, uh, Fiat, Alpha, Maserati, a bunch of different brands. Apparently they're introducing an electric ProMaster in 2023. In Europe, what we know as the Ram ProMaster, they know as the Fiat Ducato. It's basically the same thing, just a different brand name and a different face. They already have an electric version over there. So sounds like that's coming to the United States. Amazon already agreed with Stellantis to be the first purchaser of these new ProMaster EVs. So it's very possible that some of these first ProMaster EVs could be upfitted with the same package as the R2. Of course, at this point, everybody knows about the Rivians. We didn't get our first R2 until after we received our Rivians. So it's confusing because Amazon is talking about all this investment into EVs with the Rivian, but we're still seeing all these deliveries of the R2s, which are traditional gas engine vehicles. I think it's only a matter of time before these paths start to cross a little bit more and we start to see more electric transits, electric ProMasters, or electric versions of these upfitted chassis. We'll have to wait and see. So if for my next shift, I could pick any of our vehicles to drive, here's my list. Step van, EDV, Ram CDV. If you've had a chance to take one of these out on a route, leave a comment down below. I'm very curious about things people like, things people don't like any issues that are coming up since it's so new. Overall, I'm a big fan and whoever designed this should probably get a raise. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching as always and uh, hopefully you found this interesting. I've been waiting and waiting to drive one of these. We have two. One of them has a broken mirror and the part is nowhere to be found so we can't drive it, but I finally got to drive the one that was functional and I'm glad I did. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna go uh, drink the rest of my boba. See you on the next one.